keyframes are a game-changing tool that can take your videos from basic to brilliantly smooth and captivating. In this video, I'm sharing the ultimate guide to mastering keyframes. If you're new to editing, no stress. You'll be creating pro-level animations by the end, and while I'll be showing you how to do it in CapCut, what I teach here works in pretty much every editing or motion graphics program out there. Adobe After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, and more. Once you understand keyframing, you'll be able to apply it anywhere. So- Hey buddy, eyes up here. So, what is a keyframe? A keyframe marks the beginning or the end of a change in a property. Didn't understand? Well, let me tell you in a different way. Properties include things like color. Look at me, fading from vibrant color to black and white gradually. Then again, getting back to all the colors. Scale, you see how my face is slowly getting larger on screen? Position, notice how this bee is flying all around the screen. Volume, while using a background music in a video, see how I can keyframe the audio to lower over time so my voice comes through clearly. In CapCut, you can even use keyframe filters. Don't worry, I got you covered. In this video, we will go through each of these tricks so that you can master the keyframe in CapCut and all other platforms as well. Let's start with the color. Here, we have a video clip of a beach and boat in the timeline. The scenery is like a blue ocean and green shores. I want this clip to slowly fade from black and white to the original color. Here's how to do it. Open the adjustment panel, click on basic and scroll to saturation. The little diamond icons here are what we use to set keyframes. First, we will lower the saturation of the whole clip to zero. Then we will set a keyframe on the very first clip. And at four seconds in, I'll set the second keyframe for the start point of changing the saturation. Then I move forward a bit and put another keyframe. On the third keyframe, we will drag the saturation slider all the way up to zero. Now, the clip fades from full black and white to full color gradually. Want it faster? Just drag the keyframes closer together. Want it slower? Move them farther apart. It's that simple. One thing to note, each property is independent. If I keyframe saturation, that doesn't mean hue or brightness are included. You have to set a keyframe for each property you want to change. You can try CapCut completely free for the first seven days. The download link is in the description below. Let's take it up a notch with scale and position. I've got a clip of myself and I want to add a slow zoom to make the shot more engaging. Here's the process. Now place the playhead at the beginning of the clip. Then go to the basic settings of the video and set keyframes for both scale and position. After that, move the playhead to the middle portion of the clip, add another keyframe and increase up the scale. Center the position so that the clip looks good. I'll just adjust the position to keep my face centered. So now as you can see, it creates a smooth zoom in effect, which feels like professional, now if you see like the previous one, you can drag the keyframes closer, which will speed up the zoom in effect. And if you slide the keyframe to a decent space, then it will slow down the zoom in effect. Now let's do a quick zoom to grab attention. Here at this point of the clip, I set keyframes for scale and position. Then just a few frames later, I zoom in sharply. Want to see the result? See, a fast punch in that instantly commands focus. So here's a bonus tip for you. If you want to smooth this fast zoom in like a pro, you can do it by going to the variable speed animation by right clicking on the video clip. You will see the graph here for each of the positions or scales you have changed with the keyframes. Since we have used only the scale and position, we will select the both keyframes on the scale and now go to the preset curves from here. Select the quadies and you will get a similar type of motion. Now click on the extended hand of the second keyframe and drag towards the previous one. It creates a faster motion in the beginning and slower in the ending. 
do the same for the other X and Y positions as well. And that is how you can get a fast zoom in like a pro editor. The next effect is position. And for this one, we'll focus only on the position. We have our clip on the timeline. Now go to stickers and look for a sticker with a bee flying. I already have one saved, that's the one to use. This sticker has gentle movement, which looks more realistic, so we'll add it to the timeline. This is how it looks. We want the bee to fly around the clip or time frame. So first, adjust the size to what we need. Now add a keyframe for the position. Move forward some frames and add another position keyframe, then drag the bee to the opposite corner. Continue moving forward and add more position keyframes, dragging the bee to different spots around the video. When played, the bee flies around the frame smoothly. You can create any movement like this by adding position keyframes and dragging your sticker or element to desired positions. This is basic positioning with keyframes on CapCut. You can do more with built-in CapCut animations. Selecting any sticker and going to the animation section shows many options like bounce, spring, fade, zoom in, slide left right up, and exit animations like bounce, spring, or zoom out. There's also a loop option where the sticker moves continuously in that pattern, plus effects like jiggle, rotation, flip, flash, shake, swing, and more. If you want additional animation options, select none for the current ones, and try making the sticker a compound clip Right-click the sticker layer and choose Create Compound Clip. Or press Alt plus G. Now CapCut treats it like a video clip, unlocking more cool animations in the animation section. Including Extra Enter, Exit, and Combo effects. That's how you can use keyframes and animations in CapCut. Just try out your creativity and make something cooler. Don't go anywhere yet, because the last effect is coming up, and it's definitely one you don't want to miss. While you're here, leave me a quick emoji in the comments. Maybe a star emoji. For the last keyframe effect, we have volume control. We have a video clip of a car driving on a night road and a voiceover that says, Dri Driving experience like you never had before. We want to add background music to this clip. So let's add the music and stretch it to match the video length. The voiceover plays in the middle of the clip, but when played, the music volume makes the voiceover hard to hear. Driving experience like you never had before. To fix this, we use keyframes to lower the music volume during the voiceover. First, stretch the audio to the timeline, then select the music clip and go to the volume section to add a keyframe. A few frames later, add another keyframe and lower the volume to about 22, so the voiceover is clearer. Driving experience like you never had before. Then, at the end of the voiceover, add two more keyframes and raise the volume back to normal. Now, when you play the video, the voiceover stands out clearly because the music volume lowers at the right moment. Driving experience like you never had before. All right, friends, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this or learned something new, let me know with an emoji in the comments. It always makes my day to see them. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe, and tap the little bell icon so you never miss my next video. Also, don't forget to check out my previous video on text effects. It'll help you stay one step ahead and make your edits look even more professional. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see your emojis and hear your thoughts. Until next time, take care, and I will see you in the next video.